Hi guys, welcome back to my XPS guide. Now I'm gonna review Igneous Ability Awakening and I must say I really like him after his Abilities Awakening. So let's talk about his Passive Awakening first. So he only gets one Passive Awakening and I think it is kind of bland but since it is cheap, so let's just awaken it to increase his survivability. Basically what you get is 20% health defense spirit after awaken this nothing so extra okay I hope they give him something like fatal damage protection because it is really important for him you will see later why okay so enough about uh, passive awakening now let's take a look on his abilities awakening after awakening Ignis able to do many amazing things one of them is 200% all stats buff whoa that's pretty insane because first 200% is kind of high and you can cast that on the first turn and the best part is it lasts for four turns and the cooldown is only five turns so yes it is not always available the 200% buff but you will also able to use your 140% buff when you waiting for the cooldown to be over and now he also has 30% damage mitigation before you need to unlock that 30% damage mitigation but now you don't need to unlock it but the bad things is you cannot combine that 30% damage mitigation with your 200% all stats buff okay so that's kind of downing but still I guess it is pretty good especially if you have other characters who are able to cover the roles for you and that's it he can do more amazing thing but they are locked behind a setup but oh god they are so good the first one is 50% damage mitigation it lasts for five turns wow if you remember that Sacred Shield Charlotte and Galoo 50% damage mitigation only last for three turns but it's okay because it is spammable from Galoof and Sacred Charlotte but same for Ignis once you able to cast this you can easily maintain by using cooking plus two so you can always cast that 50% damage mitigation anytime you want but the problem is if your Ignis dead okay if your Ignis die then you need to use cooking plus two and then unlock it again and second amazing thing is 80% all elemental resist that's very high it is higher than Sylphie's limit burst Sylphie limit burst only give your party 75% all elemental resist so 80% is definitely good don't underestimate the 5% difference because some enemies use for example is the Darks Ifrit and Siren Trial remember that you need to have 100% resist total resist uh, to survive the dual wave attack so on that case 5% difference are really important so really guys very good he also able to give your party all elements resist buff which is an old thing but yes it is very good but maybe you don't want to rely on Ignis in this case because it locks behind the setup ability so if the enemy use elements attack on the first turn you cannot use Ignis as elements preventer and the best part another another good thing not the best part is he also able to give your party 200% faster if you rate that's kind of ordinary but the side effect will fill your allies LB gauge by 10 to 14 LB crystals. You can double cast this so when you don't need to use Ignis on other buffs you can simply double cast this ability and yes this will be very very nice okay actually I'm not sure whether you're able to cast to same cooking I mean food abilities on the same turn but if you're able to do that then that's very insane because that means 20 to 28 LB gouge per turn 
And not only that, he also able to support your attackers by imperil the enemy resist by 100% for ice, fire, and lightning. Okay, the imperils last for 4 turns, which are quite long. And he also able to imbue 2 allies per turn, so you can immediately go chaining on the next turn. Okay, very very good, now let's talk about the abilities rotation. So using Ignis on the battle depends on what your party composition. Because like I have mentioned, you cannot cast that 200% stats buff with 30% damage mitigation on the same turn. So you need to have other allies to support you. So let's say if you have Iorit, then on the first turn, what you should do is use your 200% all stats buff first. But let's say if what you have is Auron, Auron breaks also above your party stats. So that means on the first turn, use the cooking, which will give you 30% damage mitigation to all allies and give you faster access to that 50% damage mitigation. Very amazing. After you cast that 50% damage mitigation, then you can use that 200% all stats buff and simply rotating between them and once you have your cooking I mean food abilities going on you can simply maintain and make sure those amazing abilities available anytime you need to cast it okay and yes after after finishing maintaining your party defensive buff you can simply use enhancement plus two because this will imperil uh, 100% enemy, enemy resist. It is much much better than your overboost. In my opinion, your overboost is kind of useless, guys. Because what? Yeah, it is cooldown ability, and it gives you 200% all stats buff, which is kind of useless because you already you already have that 200% uh, all stats buff to all allies, including yourself. So why why you do you need to cast that 200% stat buff for yourself? Pretty stupid. This will give you the overboost. I mean, will give you 18 LB gauge, but oh, they are useless in my opinion because his LB is really inferior, guys, compared to your enhancement ability, enhancement plus two. I mean, so it, with that in mind. I think your first priority, not first, okay. Actually, your priority when you are you, when you want to use Ignis is to awaken Cooking Plus Two, Royal Banquet Canep, and Enhancement Plus Two. Those three are really really important. I cannot say which one is better because yeah, you must awaken those three to make Ignis great. But for Overboost Plus Two, oh. It is kind of useless, so you don't need to awaken it. So let's talk about party building with Ignis. Like I said, Ignis need to have someone who able to support him on the early phase of the battle on the first or second turn. Okay, so that means Iorit is really good because she has that thirty percent damage mitigation while waiting the cooking to be cast. So if you pair him with Irid, like I said, use that 200% all stats buff first and let Irid take care of the 30% damage mitigation. Another good thing about Irid is she able to give your party all stats break resist. And Ignis all stats break resist is from his cooldown ability, so you cannot rely on that. Okay? For a warrior of like Lena, she is also a good partner for Ignis because yeah, basically you only need 30% damage mitigation on the first and second turn. After that, you don't need it again. So you can use that warrior of like Lena uh, cooldown ability on the first turn, and you don't need that 100%. Water and light resist buff. They are good when you need it, but remember, Ignis also have 80% all stats buff. Okay, so only 20% difference. So I think, yeah, you don't need to save that against the enemy. And Ignis' greatest value is when you pair him with 
all tankers except for Galoof and Secretil Charlotte. I don't say Secretil Charlotte and Galoof are bad partner for Ignis, but remember Galoof and Secretil Charlotte one of their strongest point is to have 50% damage mitigation. But with Ignis on your party, you don't need them that much like before. So yes, if you use Awaken Rain, let's say for LE Magic Tank, then you're only yeah, you use Awaken Rain and let's say Bosch, then your only source for 50% damage mitigation is from Ignis. So that's what I mean by except Galoof and Secrecy Charlotte. But again, really guys, he is really good even when you pair him with Galoof and Secrecy Charlotte because those two LB crystals requirement are kind of low. So Ignis can easily recharge your Charlotte and Galoof limit burst gouge. And yes, he is also good when you pair him with a character like Cartin, because like you know that Cartin only have access to one element, Dark, and most enemies resist against Dark element. So with Ignis on your party, you can imbue Cartin elemental attack easily. And yeah, for most true double hand attackers, it is also very good because they are they are more likely to struggling in terms of elemental weapon for example Sephiroth the normal version okay you need to equip his Masemune which is yeah non elemental weapon actually that's not that problem for our Sephiroth okay because Sephiroth able to imbue himself with light and dark but yeah you get the idea right and he is also very good when you have something like Auron Kunshira because like I have mentioned if you have someone who able to maintain your party defensive stats on the beginning, then they are good for Ignis. You can use cooking to you can use cooking plus two for the 30% damage mitigation and let Auron to handle that stats buff on the beginning first. Okay? So enough about Ignis, my conclusion for him. He is really interesting buffer at this point. I can say maybe one of the best buffer. Before, I really love Sylvie, okay, because Sylvie is really versatile. She's able to give your party 50 to 75% all resist, and she's also able to give your party 170% all stats buff, and basically with that in mind, I can say that Ignis is Sylvie on steroid because whoa very very strong buffer and like you have seen before that his survivability is kind of decent with high spirit you can build him build his spirit easily and remember you all you may also need that spirit because some of his abilities able to give your party regen Okay, so that regen depends on his spirit sets. So increase his spirit. Very good. And yes, maybe you say that. But but the Ignis cannot break the enemies unlike Sylvie. Yes, that's correct. But again, like I have said, if you use Ignis, one of his best partner is Auron. So break case is already handled by Ignis. And remember, 75% break from Sylvie are cooldown ability. So again, you cannot use Sylvie as your main breaker too. So yeah, I think they are kind of on par at this point of the game, okay? But really guys, Ignis is really, really good. So if you have 7 stars Ignis, then I must say, awaken him ASAP. Maybe you have known that uh, Elfim is going to be really good, but yeah, I, we don't know when her awakening is still available. But yeah, if you already have 7 stars Elfim, don't need to force yourself to get that Ignis, okay? Don't use your UOC for Ignis. Just wait, wait, wait. Okay, Ignis is great, but 
you don't need him to clear the contents on this game okay when if you have top tier buffer like let's say maritime strategist nicole sylvie then you don't need him okay so i think that's all you need to know about ignis thank you very much for watching press the like button and subscribe to my channel for more final fantasy perfect cs guide bye bye guys